Hi everybody, I'm Conquering History Games, and welcome to uh, live stream number three of my Shushin's Nova Siberisk campaign here in Hearts of Iron for the Moe Order, where we're you know we're just kind of doing this to celebrate um, uh, to celebrate uh, hitting 100,000 views on the uh, Russian Unification Super Events video on my channel for the Moe Order. So, I think uh, where we last left off, we were, uh, oh, let's gather for some loot. We were uh, trying to figure out the game plan now that we had uh, dealt with these socialist agitators. And uh, I think I wanted to see how much, uh, Ooh, Kazumaf, it looks like you got filtered by YouTube. I've never seen you before, and, uh... See, according to my... Your dad, well, I don't know if YouTube wanted to hide you. If you got filtered, who am I to let the filter through? Um... So, yeah, hi, everybody. Uh, now, I think what we were trying to do is figure out if we can maybe basically buy our way to, uh... How do we have negative 32 progress in these missions here? <laughs> Oh, okay, that must have been an error. It's gone now. Uh, or, yeah, you guys see that? Uh, yeah, Orieta, minus 68. Uh, but let's see uh, how much we could get if we try to buy out, uh, like I was saying, if we try to buy out one of these, like, uh, in terms of percentage here. So I think we were getting, what, 4% on the Siberians? But, uh, hold on a second. Political percentage check. So we're just going to see if it's worth it to try to buy out some of these nations, or little warlords. Okay, wow, we got like a straight up 0 out of 10 troll in the chat. Uh, let's see, would I say TNO is worth it? Yeah, of course, it's obviously I've spent a lot of time playing it before. Uh, let's see, okay, so doing that just got me 3%. Disgustingly low. Um, hmm. Come on, come on. So let's see what we can do if we try to get the People's Revolution. Oh, I'm remembering now. We weren't able to even have the option to try to uh, take the People's Revolutionary Council. Um, because, uh, because the freaking, um, we don't neighbor them. Damn. Okay. So let's just try it on some of these others then. Like, let's say, you know, Krasnoyarsk. If we did that. Oh, that was big. We got like 17% right there. They nerfed me after anything Tonk. So, okay. I think Krasnoyarsk we could actually uh, successfully take uh, using the system there. Um... But I also need to strengthen the... Oh, the power of Sabir is already high, I guess, so... Let's take a look at that cat, this thing. Don't we need to buff the, um... The people? Don't we need to come down here into the Federalist Collectivism branch if we want to switch over? Gosh. And let's just keep taking the a lot of these. They're just they're not very good uh, focuses, but we gotta get through them like it or not uh now i already got that trade thing or no let's check the construction yeah i'm already at zero percent consumer good factories so i don't really care much about the uh, legacy of the siberian plan now uh industrial investments no uh training our troops could be good we need the manpower who's kyle <laughs> Hi, Benjamin. Benjamin Birch. So I was reading something right before this stream started. Um, I've talked about it so much, but I did do that big book buying spree last month. 
and a couple of the books I ordered have just barely showed up. And uh, what I was doing is I was basically going online and finding cheap copies of like any book. What I, what I was doing last month was I basically asked myself, what's any book that I even might want to read in the next two years? Um, and, I, and I ordered them. So, um, uh, yeah, Ka Ka uh, Kazumov's typing a little too fast. Can't quite figure things out. Uh, I think slow down, man. Slow down. Think your thoughts and then type them. Get the brain to the fingers. Anyway, so one of the one of the books. Wait, well, if not us, then you. So this is basically the workers are are possibly thinking about uh, doing a revolt. Uh, that that I think won't happen until after we unify Russia or Central Siberia. I meant to say. Uh, a workers' discontent is only a uh, medium, though, so I don't think that's going to happen. This is a sub mod in the Steam Workshop right now. Yeah, yeah, I have the new order. The, the mods that I have activated is I have white font, um, the new order, the Moe order, which is the sub mod to the new order, and uh, player-led peace conferences. Uh, and I think that's it. I forgot to get vanilla UI, so I'm kind of getting used to that. So reviewing the airborne troops, we need modernization badly, whatever. So anyway, I picked up this book um, which was by an author I sort of via the periphery had heard about, this guy called Walter Benjamin. And uh, the first time I had heard his name was um, I once had had a class where I was studying the philosophy of history, which is a complex uh, subject that I'm not going to get into right now, but the professor uh, was primarily a continental philosopher, especially uh, German idealism. And um, he was going to do like with his master's students because i was working on my undergrad at the time uh this class where they were only going to be focusing on a single philosopher for the entire year because he was like somebody who was translating his work and he's like this is a it's like this is a big time philosopher that people don't understand enough about um and he's like the culmination of several he was like the mid 20th century culmination of several different branches of uh philosophy <laughs> Yes, happy Armistice Day to those of you in France. Uh, I'm going to be spending mine working, uh, so I won't be eating as much as I usually do on Armistice Day here in the United States. On Armistice Day, it's like, that's my Thanksgiving. I, I eat so much usually. Anyway, so this Walter Benjamin guy, I ordered um, one of his books that has, like, uh, his essay on the philosophy of history, which he apparently wrote, like, right before he died. So it's, like, it's the culmination of his life's work. Uh, and I've heard that it's very controversial, uh, but I, I, I love reading uh, philosophies of history uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, even ones that disagree with one another, I'll, I'll find value in. They're super interesting to me. Can I beat these guys? Inferior enemy, it says. Wait, what? Oh, no, 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 it's Orietia here. This is what we need to raid. So, um... So anyway, I order a book by this guy, and I and it also has an introduct the specific edition I did I got because it has an introduction and say by Hannah Ardent, who is another she can kind of be controversial at times, but she's mostly well respected. Um, as a as a, she's like another German philosopher, she's kind of most she's most famous for her book uh, the origins of totalitarianism. Uh, and you know, have you ever heard that phrase, the banality of evil? Uh, that that comes from her. Oh, Independence Day in Poland. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Happy Independence Day, Tam. So, um, so freaking. Uh, I was. Um, yeah, I guess I never really thought about that. Armistice Day is also Polish Independence Day. That totally makes sense, though. Uh, hold on a sec. All right, so we're gonna try to prepare this raid here. Oh, we're gonna whoop their asses. Yeah, this is gonna be an easier fight than if we did Kemerov. Oh shoot! I haven't been doing the um, I haven't been working over Kresno, Kresnoyarsk. Yeah, keep pressuring them. Keep pressuring them. Uh, hold on. Keep getting distracted, and then I can't tell my Benjamin story. Um. Hmm. 
me think here. Yeah, here, here it is. Here, Orieta. Yeah, prepare the raid. So the Benjamin story, and then I'll answer your question, Kazimov. But, uh, uh, but I was um, so I so I I opened the box, and the Benjamin book is in there. It's got the introduction essay by um, by uh, um, Hannah Arden. And uh, I, oh shoot. Sorry, I was just grabbing it. <laughs> uh, so, and then, you know, on the back though, I'm reading about it and it has, you know, like a lot of books, they'll have like a very short author bio. And it says, Walter Benjamin was a German Jewish Marxist literary critic, essayist, translator, and philosopher. And I went, I didn't know he's a, he was a Marxist, which is interesting because I don't have any Marxist philosophy uh, in my home other than, uh, like, the Communist Manifesto itself, which barely counts because, like, everybody who studies 19th century, or even 20th century history needs to read that. Um, so, like, I don't really count that. So I went, ooh, a Marxist philosopher in my home. How interesting. But then I opened the book itself, and I'm l trying to see how long the Hannah Ardent uh, introduction is like should I sit down and read this now and then my thumb flips and I see the first essay and it's called unpacking my library a talk about book collecting I went book collecting and so I started reading it it was only 10 pages long but it's so funny uh like uh <laughs> and it's like he's not political at all he's just a guy talking about how he likes collecting um books and, uh, yeah, it's just, like, a really humorous, uh, story, but it's, like, it's one of those things, like, it's funny because it's true, where he's just talking about people who collect books, which I sure, certainly am, uh, and, like, what drives them and how their brains work, and it's just, it's like, a really funny essay, and, uh, and it was kind of weird because the only thing I know about Ben Hameen is that he killed, or one of, basically the only thing I know about him is that he killed himself. So I imagined like a really depressed dude, but here he's having this funny, writes this funny essay on collecting books. So I, I, I was liking that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hmm. Focus on research. No, I need to save up to train the troops. No, actually, I need to not be doing that. I need to just be keep trying to do this political pressure. We're getting closer already, though. Wait, where'd my command power book go? Oh, did I use it on the stupid fucking... Oh, I think I did. Yeah, did I just do a force attack for no reason? God damn it. Screwed that up. Oh, no, I know it's because I spent it on the... Setting up the raid. That was it. Tribute was paid. Thank you for the political power. That's kind of why I need more than the loot right now. Uh, okay, new focus. Fruits of the Siberian plan. Industrial, whatever. Don't really matter, but we could also fund some new programs here. I think agriculture, agriculture is usually pretty solid to, uh, to boost for basic mechanization. Then again, we don't need to reduce our consumer good factories. I do like that factory art output. Jean-Pierre Proudhon. Now, is that the guy who wrote, I think it's called State and Anarchism? He was, like, the first uh, major, like, literary break from, uh, from Marxism? Uh, I don't know. Or was that, uh, was that his pupil? No, because, yeah, State and Archism was, like, written by a Russian, wasn't it? I'd like to get that. One of, kind of, one of my, like, mini collections within my collection is I would like to get a lot of, uh, you know, economic works. Like, I'd like to have, the, you know, Capital, Wealth of Nations, Conquest of Bread, um, State and Anarchism, you know, things like that. And I have some of those books, but not all of them. It's interesting, you know. Let's do Industry. Okay, it's Christmas. Come on. He's the father of anarchisme. Oh yeah, so Kazimov, sorry I didn't answer your question. Okay, so so Kazimov was asking um 
If your channel doesn't find success in the next five or six years, do you still plan to continue? Man, I hope you do. You're a good streamer. Well, first off, thank you very much. I appreciate the compliment. Secondly, um, I, I guess it depends on what we define as success. Uh, let's see. Obviously, if the, the channel was ever self-sustaining, I'd just do it indefinitely. Like, if it paid all my bills, I, I would do it all the time. Um... But, uh, which is, maybe we're going to see what happens on my other channel, actually, about that. But we're not going to really see, I'm not even going to really be able to start that for real until January. I could, like, do little bits and pieces here and there, but not really, really get into it until January. But we'll see. Uh, flying toward the future, soaring above the Federation, entire peninsula's created a colonial project by the German Craig Zareen, dream of when they realized. So we just got ourselves a flying ace. Who floats through the air with the greatest of these? The daring young man on the flying trapeze. But yeah, this uh, this Walter Benjamin. I'm reading other things right now, so I'm not gonna get to the rest of this book. It's not very long though. It's like a series of essays, and the whole thing is only like. Not counting the notes, it's like about 200 pages. Oh my gosh, I'm actually flipping now through his philosophy of history. I know that it's uh, it's like divided into sections, and most of these are only a couple paragraphs long. I might be able to read it in tiny little bites. Um, but yeah, that that li that book collecting essay was funny. Hello there, creative pink game. How's it going? Yeah, I was just talking about like reading a bit of a book uh, before the stream started. Had a heck of a day at work, so that was. I'm glad that kind of got that kind of got me in a good mood, because uh, yeah, work was just some fucking bullshit. Um, I don't want to get into the details of it. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I work at the United States Postal Service, and um, you know the union, the United States Postal Service has one of the few. Uh, without without revealing whether you know how I feel about unions personally, but they have one of the few unions in the United States that's considered to be semi-strong. Now, the thing is, though, there's no, like, singular United States Postal Service Union. Hey, the Welsh Union has won the election, which means we get to see one of my favorite pictures of Watame. Oh, there she is in her scarf, too. That's wonderful, isn't it? Um, so, uh, the fluffy sheep. So, so anyway, uh, without getting too much into it, there were two times today where union representatives came up to me and some of the other people working and were getting our names down and getting some information from us because uh, there's going to be some hell to pay uh, from the management. Uh, the union's going to be going at them uh, pretty strong. I'm not saying this is something that's going to like make national news. This is strictly a local issue, but it was one of those things where it's like... Um... Some shit's gonna start getting flung around, uh, cause these managers were, were just fucking up big time. Um, it was one of those things like, you guys are either being stupid, or you're being exploitative. And you better hope you're just being stupid. Uh, that's the, uh, the tact, I think, that the union is gonna be taking on this. Um, so, anyway, Britain is not a dream. Alright, hold on a second, I gotta grab something off this table. Okay. By the way, I'm not gonna be streaming super long today because it was a really long and difficult day at work. And, um, I haven't done any reading today except for, like, those ten pages of that essay. And as you all know, there's a few books I'm trying to wake, work my way through and I don't want to fall behind. I just want to read those before bed. Oh god, I actually have a little bit of a headache, and I never get headaches. Uh, let's secure control and keep exerting pressure. Fuck me. Oh, uh, we're not in a great spot. because we're training the new workers and security control it's just hurting how much politics are coming in uh so me kyle was a man i need i need a i need to get um some water
Uh, but yeah, Emilio, that sounds very interesting, that guy. Like I said, it's very, it's, it's interesting to me, um, you know, comparing and contrasting all sorts of political and economic thought, uh, in philosophy. Uh... Let's see, you'll find out he's racist, anti-communist, and colonial, so you can say that anarchism is incompatible with communism, but not for me. I learned it from a French metal band named Peste Noir. Huh. Nick Game says technically both communists and anarchists want the same thing, they just very heavily disagree on how to get there. And uh, that's how you end up with SPLITTERS! <laughs> um, but it is interesting, uh, the, the things, especially... What I find most interesting when, when comparing philosophies and, and religions and, and economies is, is uh, or economic doctrines is um, when you get two ideas of thought that really disagree with one another, that, that just fucking hate each other, that seem incompatible, um, but then end up uh, finding some sort of common ground somewhere... And then it's like, why do they have that common ground when they're so different otherwise? Th those sorts of things I find really, really fascinating. Um, for example, The Wealth of Nations, that's a book I've got. Uh, that's the classic, you know, that's the Bible of capitalism, right? Um, but there is an entire chapter in that book that just talks about how, then again, I don't, Maybe there's more, but at least the version I have. I have a version that's like got three volumes. It's like a slightly abridged version, but it's like it's my understanding that the, the I have the Oxford World Classics version, and it's my understanding that the parts that aren't in there are kind of just they're not really they just don't hold up. But anyway, there's a whole chapter in Wealth of Nations, at least in the version I have, where Adam Smith is just talking about how landlords are like the worst fucking people on earth. They're parasites. They're, they're leeches on society and nature, and it's like, uh, and it's like, whoa, I didn't know Mao wrote Wealth of Nations. Uh, uh, anyway, Mikhail was a man who had long been active in the Federation's industrial landscape. He owned several, and several what? And had bought in many, oh, he owned several, comma, and had bought and sold many more, comma. That probably should be in parentheses. Factories and plants of all kinds. For many years, it had been a difficult existence, but no longer. Now the rewards long promised were finally being delivered. The benefits pledged by the Siberian plant had been realized, and economic activity within the Federation was rapidly increasing, both vertically and horizontally. That meant more factories, more jobs, and more production. It also, critically for Mikhail and his contemporaries, meant more money. Lots more. Uh, he had been watching the stock market all morning, and the shares listed upon it had done nothing but rise. For his company, for the companies of his friends, and most of all, for the companies that the government had chosen to favor. Even better, the rise showed no signs of stopping. This was truly a great day. Of course, there were those who claimed the money was not going where it was needed, or that it should be redirected to those more in need of it, with the exact definition of that need left purposely nebulous. But Mikhail paid them no mind. Wherever the money was going otherwise, enough was coming to him, and truly, was anyone else more deserving? Oh. <sighs> okay. The fruits of labor. Uh, let's see. Monthly population can grow. We'll get rid of our disproportionate population. What is that one doing to us? That hurts stability. Hmm. Greases consumer good factories. I don't really need that right now. Let's get these military factories. Yeah, I'm already at zero consumer factories. Well, maybe that means I can adjust. No, never mind, never mind. We're 85% progress here. He considers himself 80% punk, 20% national socialist. You know, that reminds me, did anybody ever see that movie? I, 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 God, I'm forgetting its name right now. I'm looking it up. Uh, but uh, I think I saw it with some friends a couple years ago uh, where the it was a horror movie where the plot was that... Um, oh, I'm looking 
what's up. The plot was that there was a, it's a punk rock band that was uh, traveling through the United States, and uh, they end up. Uh, and they end up uh, at a Nazi club, uh, and they, uh, you know, the horrors that uh, that get unleashed from there. Uh, when, co let's see, yeah, here we go, here we go. I found it. it's called Green Room. It was made in 2015. Horror thriller film written and directed by Jeremy Slaughter, and uh, so. Uh, the film focuses on a punk band who find themselves attacked by neo-Nazi skinheads after witnessing a murder at a remote club in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, so, yeah. It's it's an interesting film. I'm not going to say it's like the greatest film ever made. Greatest horror. I'm not much of a... I'm not much of a horror movie kind of guy, but it was certainly an interesting idea. Oh, that guy's making another movie right now. It's called Rebel Ridge. What's that about? No... No word on it. No, there's no plot summaries. Uh, anyway. Uh, but yeah, when, they, when they're at the club, the first thing, because they didn't know it was a Nazi club, the first song they play is, you know, Nazi pugs, fuck off! Nazi pugs, fuck off! Uh... But like the, the the club's like yeah rock and roll and they're like headbanging to it they're cool with it uh, and then later they try to kill the band but there's a line Patrick Stewart's character said because he's he's like the villain he's the he's the head Nazi and um, there's a part where he just says it's not about hatred it's a movement. Or something like that, where it's like, kind of cleaning it up a little, huh? <laughs> it's about community, guys. It's about taking care of your blood and your soil. Wait, what? No. <laughs> Alright, Remifs. Remfis uh, is fleeing. Communist revolution in the Levant, Zionist opposition to the communist government is already starting to flare up in Jewish majority areas. Whoa, okay. So, uh, we got communist greater Israel, everybody. Yeah, pa Patrick Stewart, who's playing a neo-Nazi, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, but the other, incidentally, the other book that uh, came in today is one that I actually can't read right now because it is in a non-English tongue, uh, but it's in a, it's in a language that I would like to, it's, it, I, I won't say what the book is, I will just say that it is a very thick book. And uh, it is one of my, I guess, like bucket list items in life that um, I want to be able to read that particular book in its original language someday. So I found it, and the copy was beautiful. I couldn't believe how it was such a pretty book. Uh, I didn't even care if it was going to be pretty or not, but it was. So that was nice. Uh, workers are resorting to direct action. Strikes are going on. They're getting uppity about unfair conditions. Rumble, 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 rumble. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I like, like, oh my god, this book is so pretty, and then I put it away. <laughs> Do you watch a bunch of horror when you, all those horror, Exorcist, Exorcist, Chucky, and Chainsaw Massacre when you weren't even 10, your cousin make me. Very interesting to see a bunch of anime girls I recognize when you're doing these live streams, yeah? Do you know who this one is? She kind of looks like she could be one of those, uh... People from uh, what are they called? Shambhala, in uh, in Full Metal Alchemist. Shambhalans, is that what they're called? Oh, but they have red eyes, don't they? Hmm. 
Or were there other ones? Oi, Mio! Ah! <laughs> what? Uh, Mio isn't turkey, but she's a wolf, not a turkey. <laughs> That's funny. And then, uh, and then there's Watame. Whalesame. How can a sheep run whales? That doesn't make sense. Uh, you're imagining Picard as a neo-Nazi on the uh, Enterprise. Well, you know, I've never really seen Star Trek, but isn't... I, I could be wrong, but... Um, is it, isn't that like... Isn't it one of the, like, the dirty secrets of Star Trek that the Federation is a fascist government or something? I, for all its like idealism about science, isn't the actual government a fascist one in that world? Like maybe they don't call themselves fascists, but they have all the indicators of a fascist state. Uh, let's see. Okay, we can prepare another raid here. Oh wait, 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 wait. Whoops, 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 whoops. I've been so bad about this pressure. Wait. Yes, I think we just hit 100 percent, 102 percent. We're about to get another free territory. Take it over, baby. Yes, yes, good, good, Kemeroff, no, uh, but, uh, no, I don't know, maybe it'll be Kemeroff, maybe it'll be somebody else. Uh, we now have access, though, to the People's Revolutionary Council border. Guys, hype, we just took a little more, a little more Central Siberia for free. Thank you very much, Franchan. Oh, is that a new profile picture? Can't tell. Um, mm, could scavenge for loot. No, let's just initiate a raid or prepare to initiate a raid. Uh, cool, we got this. Division speed, supply consumption, construction speed, all those buffs. That's good to have. Oi, um, oi, oi. We're having some garrison problems. Units ready for deployment. Hey, why do I have all this stuff queued up? I don't remember doing that. No wonder I don't have manpower. Oh my gosh! I had manpower this whole time! Gipsy, what'd you say about comment? Oh, I was just talking about how, um, you were saying Patrick Stewart, you're imagining Patrick Stewart is a neo-Nazi on the Enterprise, and I was saying, isn't the, isn't the, like, the Federation a fascist state in Star Trek? I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I've never seen the Star Treks. In fact, the only Star Trek I'd ever seen in my life until, like, a couple months ago was the first J.J. Abrams reboot movie. I saw that in theaters years ago, when, you know, when it, when it came out. Um, so, I don't really know anything about it. Let's see. In France, we already had fascist personalities such as Jacques Doriette, Georges Sorel, Marcel Diet, Marcel Bucard, before, e before even Mussolini and Hitler created their states. Tu les France sans the innovators. Sorry for, oh gosh, that probably came off as mocking, although you know that French accent. Uh, thousands of workers were on strike outside of a steam mill in the industrial sector of Nova Sibirsk. Um, oh yeah, no, then Marcel Deep. I did a, didn't I do a Marcel Deep campaign once? It might have been like a live stream, um, where I did Marcel, I did the Marcel Deep, uh, France and Kaiserreich, where you trigger the, the early invasion of the Entente, and I used it to, like, take out the, uh, basically I, I kinda, I triggered that war on purpose so that I could defeat the Entente before I fought Germany, so I was, like, the Entente were dead by the late 30s. Uh, a lot of island hopping, though. I had to, like, go down into Africa and then into the Caribbean. Actually, into South America and then the Caribbean. That was a heck of a... That was a really... Okay, okay. So let me explain what I was talking so, so for those of you who don't know, well, let me read this managerial response and then somebody, if I don't, somebody tell me to explain my Marcel Deep campaign strategy. So, thousands of workers were on strike outside of a steel mill. Uh, corporate security guards made a loose and patchy ring around the striking wor workers. Uh, speeches about the injustices of the, uh, corporation came to, there was a tattered flag of the Soviet Union. Workers decided they would not stand for their continued abuse. There was a lull in the old Tory and a change in the air. Two corporate IFVs rolled down the street toward the crowd. A man with a megaphone calling for the strikers to return to work. 
His demands were unanswered. The IFVs unleashed canisters of tear grass into the crowd. Cries went up as those nearest the gas panic had fled, eyes and lungs burning. Corporate goons advanced on the crowd, beating those they caught with batons. The shot rang out. Panicked workers trampled each other to get out of the line of fire, while corporate security fired wantonly into the crowd. Seely tried to regain some semblance of calm, but it was in vain as he was hit in the gut by a burst of fire from a panicking guard. He fell, reaching for the flag of the Union. As he bled out, watching his friends be gunned down by trigger-happy guards, he wept, all for the pursuit of profit. Controversial topic, what was the fastest president from election to assassination? Well, that doesn't seem like it'd be controversial so much as it would just be, you know, calculating, you know, that's just facts. Not saying whether the assassination was right or wrong. But, uh, no, I don't have the answer to that off the top of my head. That's an extremely specific question. Uh, I think we want to get this war support up. Oh, uh, but it'll hurt my stability. Uh... Yeah, we're gonna do it. Oh, there goes my political power. Still waiting for the raid to be prepared. Would've gotten really interesting if uh, Franklin Roosevelt had ended up getting assassinated before his first term of office. Almost happened. Alright, they refuse tribute. Alright, we'll do it the hard way. My way is the right way, your way is the wrong way. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. What hit happened in TNO? Oh, like Franklin in the TNO world, Franklin Roosevelt was killed by that. Naruto. Uh, Naruto is first first president of the Second Republic of Poland got assassinated five days after. Oh goodness, that's uh that's no bueno. Let's play. George Soros already had a concept of a uh, syndactical fascist state before Mussolini and Hitler could even walk on their two feet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's how that's how a lot of these things go um, with different kinds of political ideologies. It's like there's the seeds of it, and, and it doesn't go mainstream, man, until later. Hmm. Heck, just look at the gap between you know, just to use the most famous example, the Communist Manifesto. I mean, of Marx's work. You got the uh, the Communist Manifesto. What's that published? 1848. When is a when is a Soviet nation created? 1917. Arguably later, if you don't count until after the Civil War is over. So you know, decades went by. Thoughts on the. Whew, oh, excuse me. Thoughts on the Rittenhouse trial. Why the heck would I talk about that on this channel? <laughs> Where's part one to this stream? I can't find it on the channel. Uh, oh, you know what? I haven't renamed the uh, the playlist yet, but uh, I'm, I'm checking the other monitor to make sure this is correct. But if you go to my channel, and then go to playlists, under Russian Unification Celebration Stream, you'll see, uh, you'll, you'll see them. Uh. Okay. So really, this is part. This stream is part three. Oh God, miss the yawning. Spoils of war, nice. Still so short on so much. Let's scavenge for loot, uh, and I believe I shall. Then I could do other stuff. Oh. Uh, 
Militar State, Madagascar, Madagascar is blowing up. Okay, things are gonna start accelerating, guys. Uh, around the world. But, we, uh, we took out two rivals. Uh, which is great. We're in a really good spot here in Central Siberia. Big Mussolini coined the term fascist. Yeah, well, um, so interesting thing about that is, uh, I think it was the Encyclopedia Britannica or something, or some sort of encyclopedia in the 20s was trying to do a definition of fascism, but everybody argued about what fascism meant, so they contacted Mussolini and had him write, like, the article in the encyclopedia for it. Uh, which those are soon. Thanks to me, I learned about him, because normally in France you don't learn about other fascist personalities except Bétain school. Ah, big done. How to fall so low, so fast. <laughs> Talk about it. That guy's a classic example of die the hero or live long enough to become a villain. Which encyclopedia? I think it was the Encyclopedia Britannica. Let me look it up. Maybe I can find it. Okay, Mussolini. Encyclopedia. But then again, it's probably just gonna... It's probably just gonna pop up stuff that, uh... Is a, uh, encyclopedia articles about him. I'm trying to find one that he wrote. Uh... Let's see, maybe if I look for things he authored? Um, give me a second here, guys. Fascism. There was the Fascist Manifesto, but. Hold on a second. Death, personal views, legacy. Here we go. Writings. Uh, oh, it was the Italian uh, Encyclopedia. So it was in 1932. Yeah. So in 1932, the Encyclopedia Italiana. Uh, wanted to you know see what is uh fascism and so then uh uh they benito mussolini wrote it mm -hmm. <laughs> uh Okay, what was I? Yeah, another another character like Bethan, like how you're talking about, he's still the lion of Verdun, but he's also a collaborator, uh, you know, so it's like, but like one doesn't wash away the other. That's kind of how, that's, that's the sense I get, you know, having lived in a border town all my life, they've got to change this portrait, unless it's a reference, I don't understand, I'm not a huge fan. Uh, uh, but like Porfirio Diaz down in Mexico seems to have like a mixed legacy because everyone will tell you well Porfirio Diaz was great because he started that he really got the nation industrializing but the, those same people will also say but you know the revolution had to happen because uh, you know he was a bastard <laughs> because Porfirio Diaz was a bastard man uh, and then, as I always have to say, I'm, I'm legally obligated to, um... Oh, no! It's my first day! The stocks are on fire! Oh, no! <laughs> this is a great picture. It's just, oh, I feel so bad for her. What's happening? <laughs> um... So... Uh, as I as I legally am always obliged to say, uh, in El Paso, Texas, there is a Porfirio Diaz street, which is a little strange. You know, I have a street named after a foreign leader. Um, but it's a uh, it's a small street. Okay, so fertile lands, new beginnings. Let's see what's going on here. Constantin had been rootless for many years. 
Originally from Tambov, he and his family had fled eastward during the German invasions and subsequent state collapse. And, oh, excuse me, and like so many others, had found themselves with almost nothing, having to uh, leave all land and possessions behind. Arriving alongside thousands of others in the refugee communities outside Nova Sibirsk, he had scraped by as a laborer when able, while his wife worked in a laundry and his sons ran errands for merchants and artisans. But no matter what they did, they could not get ahead. Let's see. All Mexican heads of state will be luchadores instead of old placeholders before the Mexican content of Tino gets headed off. Oh, Brandon, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Uh, <laughs> but luchadores, huh? There's a whole lot to choose from. Um, so, arriving alongside... Yeah, okay, so basically, refugees, years of disappointment were such that when his wife told him to sign up for the government's supposed new program, he almost had not done so thinking it pointless, but now standing along the road beside her and looking at the vast tracts of overgrown wildlands in front of them, he silently gave thanks once again because the land was now theirs. Uh, the program intended to address the refugee problem by settling them on vast tracts of rental land, removing them from the overpopulated communities, while hopefully acting to increase agricultural output. Constantine didn't know how successful the former would be, but he knew very well that, at least in his case, the latter very much would be. He would make sure of it. There was a lot of very hard work to do. The house had to be essentially rebuilt. The fields needed to be cleared and planted. Harvests needed to be planned. Constantine had never been a farmer, but the future promised for his family could not be ignored. They had a home again, land to call their own, and he would ensure that the state was repaid for its generosity. The state provides. Pancho Villa and Emiliano Zapata's excellent adventure. Yeah. You know, speaking of Mexican luchadors, what is Dragon Lee up to these days? Uh, he's this wrestler who's pretty dang good, but uh, I don't know what he's doing for these days. Uh, he works for Rhea of Honor, where he is currently double champ, world television champ, and world tag team champion. With La Fashion Ingobernable, teammate Kenny King. They let Kenny King in there! <laughs> well, good for him, he's still working. Yeah. Well, hopefully he'll be able to make it out to, uh... Japan for the next uh, Best of the Super Juniors tournament. Okay. Oh, I don't have the political power to integrate just yet here. Um, I want to get to this our Destiny Made Manifest and then I actually might just stop the stream, but I also want to see if there's a way that I could you know, hopefully whatever's the next focus tree that's going to load up, it's going to give me some options that are going to be able to push me actually to Shushkin because we're in the third live stream in this series and I'm still uh, Pokrishkin. Uh. Oh, so I was just realizing, I think I was telling you about the, the book collecting essay, uh, the library essay, and I was laughing, but I didn't give an example of like what was so funny. So there's a story he tells about how, because I guess one of the ways that he would get books is like, I guess people die or whatever, and you know, their estates are being auctioned off, and so he would go just to auction on books. Um, you gotta remember, this is like in the early 20th century, uh, so this isn't, he can't just, you know, buy books online. Uh, <laughs> Although he does talk about how you order through catalogs and the and the things that go along with that, but anyway, so see this Ben Hamin, he's he's talking about how like he uh he went to this auction, and then he um he was bidding, and then it just kept getting bid up and up and up. This one book he wanted, and he was talking like he wanted this book not even for the main part of the book, but because of the preface, like the essay written by somebody else. Nova Sibirsk spent the last arduous months fighting its internal issues, drugs, crime, and socialist agitators. These problems have been solved and our position has become strengthened. Instead of looking, it is time to look out from our current borders. Generals have already been ordered to start drawing up their war plans in preparation for the battles they are to fight. With the fight of the Federation's army under their, our command, I suppose we'll say the might of the Federation's army under our command, our conquest of Central Siberia is all but assured. For the Falcon's wings are no longer clipped, it is time for the Federation to take flight. Bam, ba, dam, bam, 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 b
Dun 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 dun. <laughs> anyway, so so Ben Hamin, he's talking about uh, being at this uh, auction, and he's trying to get this book, and this other guy just keeps fucking bidding him up, and uh, he finally outbids the guy, and it turns out to be like the most expensive book uh, that anybody spent money on uh, that uh, that day, and. Uh, so he was talking about it ended up being like this much money, which uh, back then I was a student, and so I, uh, that really hurt. Now, when I tell this story, I don't talk about uh, when I went to the pawn shop the next day. Uh, anyway, let's move on to something else. Uh, anyway, so, it's, so I just thought that was so funny. He's like, yeah, I bought a book and I had to go like hawk some jewelry or something, whatever, to buy it, or I don't know. Uh... My hope is that Shushkin would not be too heretical as a furry. May the Christ preserve me. As a furry? Shushkin a furry? I know he was an actor. Okay, let's uh, let's do a save file here. I want to see if we could what it's going to take us to start convincing the others. Political, political percentages. Attempt to come on. All right. So if I went here, let's say I tried to buy out uh, Gemerov, right? So if I did that, ooh, big money. That's twenty-two percent. You know what? We're we're just not going to do better than that with the other two. So let's just start getting ready to buy them out. Buy you out. Buy you out. We're at negative 3% consumer factories. We might be able to actually start doing some concessions or something. Ah, fuck the workers discontent. So, okay, we also have a fair amount of command power, so let's do the military pressure as well. Hell yeah, so that puts us up to 44% already. Yes, 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 things are going great. Sorry, I didn't ASMR me drinking that water uh, as well as I should have. My blunder. Hmm. Gonna do that political campaign, external investments, infrastructure. No, 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 no. Kimarov's feeling the love. Yeah, yeah, this medieval. Yeah, Rorik here uh, is, is liking what I'm bringing to the table right now. Yeah, we could do military pressure again, and then some more political pressure. Yeah, that we've already almost got them. Uh, maybe do some new schools. I think some of this stuff is less important than it usually is, though, because we're just gonna um, we're just gonna be buying out whoever unifies the rest of it. Buying out the anarchists, not the weirdest thing. They're anarcho-capitalists. We're not buying out the anarchists yet. We're going after the, uh, the despots. Let's see, they're figuring out their contradictions. Uh oh what's happening? What's happening? Okay, that was weird. I don't know what just happened there, but I didn't like it. <laughs> Not one bit. Oh, oh, it's uh, is the Madagascar War almost over? Or no? Let's see if the Jews will win again. The Jews have been winning a ton lately in my games. Rurik is cool. Well, I, I don't want to play Rurik in. So this it might take like a couple years for all we know. I'm not. I don't want to play Rurik until the expanded tree is out because look, I can either go with Prince Yiryi, which is Noel from Hall Alive, or Princess Lydia. So like these are two Hall Alive characters I particularly enjoy. Oh, Hamtar, how's Caesar doing? He's doing good. He's actually uh, taking a nap in a chair next to me. He likes to hang out near me, especially when I'm at work all day. The Federation's Destiny. 
Alexander Porkrishkin stepped up to the podium and began to speak. The audience listened in rapt attention, for he had been and was now speaking of great futures to come. Um, it was no secret, uh, she began, that the Federation was beginning to look outward across the borders of the limited territories that it now occupied and towards those occupied by the other statelets. Vast expanses laden with resources, people, and strategic positions. Expanses that would in time fall under the Federation's control. It was only natural, he continued, that the Federation, with Nova Sabir at its heart, possessed a special destiny not seen elsewhere in Siberia. It was the largest city east of the Urals, formed a critical junction on the primary route of travel across Siberia. And let give him a head pat. Well, he's napping right now, I don't want to wake him up. But I give him lots of head pats all day long. And when I'm reading, I'll pet him with one hand while I hold the book with the other. Uh, was it not, she concluded, therefore logical that the Federation would leverage those advantages to reclaim lands rightfully belonging to it? Further, having accomplished that goal, was it not similarly logical that the Federation would continue expansion over all of Siberia? Um, French is still thinking of moving Cali somewhere else since Kemerov probably won't get 1970s content for ages. Oh, so Noelle's just gonna rot? <laughs> I'm, play I'm playing around. Uh, hey, you know, it's just me who's not doing that. I'm sure there's other people who play Kemerov. Um, <laughs> go, Jews! <laughs> uh, where was I? It's inevitable. Dominion over Russia plotted. They hope so. An impossible goal. Okay, so we get a new tree now. The Spring Rasputitsa! Hmm. Uh, increases the populace, cost, order, stability. Huh. Alright, well, I think I can do this last bit of pressure on Kemerov anyway. That's that. And it's mine! Ah! <laughs> We've done it! Uh, down to just the commies and the. And, you, know, they're, you know what? They're all just commies. Like one of them's socialism, one of them's communism. But speaking of which, um, I wanted to show you guys something funny. I'm gonna, well, I can't show you it, but I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna grab a couple things from the other room. <laughs> okay, I'm back. So. Um, I have to, you know, I was talking about like how I like to get, um, uh, you know, I'm trying to collect books that with different points of view, political economy, I love to compare and contrast the stuff. So I actually have a, it's not the version that I've read from before, uh, on the channel when I hit the, did that subscriber live stream, but I have, um, a, a, the penguins classic version of the communist manifesto. And, um, it's like, I kind of wish I had a camera for stuff like this, but, so this Communist Manifesto, the by Penguin's Classic, is, uh, is, is, like, much taller and wider than my, uh, uh, Bantam Classic Communist Manifesto that I usually read from. Um, but, uh, wait, Crony is probably a better fit for Kimrov anyway, based on our Frostpunk right through. Oh, nice. I actually might need to check that out because I want to learn how to play Frostpunk. Um, but anyway, so this copy of the Communist Manifesto, not counting the notes, and there's a lot of notes, uh, is like 257 pages because it's a lot of it is commentary on it and stuff. But even with all the commentary that you get um, by this guy called uh, Gareth Stedman Jones, I actually don't know much about him, but it's an interesting essay he has at the beginning or a series of essays. So the MSRP on this book, because I usually buy my books in, in thrift stores. Um, so like we're talking about this, you know, communism, right? Right, in theory, communist manifesto. Uh, the MSRP on this book, according to the back of a barcode, is supposed to only cost $8. Even if you buy a brand new copy. Uh, which I think is a pretty good deal, uh, because you know, at the, you know, at the, you're know you kind of paying for the essay, but I think that's a very good deal. Um, then meanwhile, I also have here a copy of the Penguin's classic, uh, The Conquest of Bread, 
by T Peter uh, Kropotkin, which I haven't read yet. But this one, The Conquest of Bread, I know enough that it's supposed to be like this utopian thing where it's all about, you know, these tiny little communes and, and you're being like anti the authoritarian branch of communism. It, it's a bunch of hippie bullshit, right? I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm joking around. But but yeah, so, so this is supposed to be um, a little bit more utopian and altruistic in, uh, in nature. The MSRP on this one, uh, which is a thinner book, it's like, even with the notes, it's only like 200... 20 pages um and the font is noticeably bigger this one is 17 dollars msrp which i think is just kind of very funny uh, <laughs> uh compared so it's like yeah you can get like communist manifesto taller wider thicker more comprehensive essay or you could get the uh the conquest of bread uh and pay more than twice as much for less <laughs> The Conquest of Bread is every Twitter leftist favorite book they've never read. I don't know much about Twitter other than uh, I will have a friend who's super into Twitter. Um, he gets mad about it all the time, but he seems to enjoy his anger because uh, it keeps going back. But he, uh, he'll he tell me about stuff on Twitter and, and, and being very passionate about books that you've never read seems to be one of the core, it's like a central pillar of the, uh, the Twitter community. <laughs> across all the political ideologies it's like you got to have books that you love that you never read which makes sense when you think about it because twitter is uh you know isn't the whole concept of twitter that you, you can only use like 140 uh characters so you know when you're when you're dealing when you've got this culture that's based around only reading 140 letters at a time how can you ever possibly expect those people to read a book <laughs> Ah, uh, freaking! My friend actually, who's super into Twitter, was uh, was telling me something. So, so, or was it a different friend? Wait, hold on. I'm trying to. Rem I'm trying to get my stories straight. You know, it doesn't matter which one of my friends it was. But uh, as you know, that I've got I've got friends who, uh, as I've said before, I have friends that are across the ideological spectrum, and. Um, one of them was telling me about this uh, thing. Maybe you guys have heard of it. I never had until he brought it up. Uh, this Let's Go Brandon thing. So Let's Go Brandon has become like a slang term. Uh, let's see. I miss the days of forums when lonely dudes in their 30s would write literal novels about which anime girl has better tits. I think I once saw a screenshot where there was like a forum where you could only post in Latin. Like, you know, it was a, I guess a forum dedicated to the, you know, studying and I guess you can't really revive Latin, but you know, just having conversations in Latin for people who are studying it. And the screenshot, I'd have to take their word for it, but it was people arguing about waifus in Neon Genesis Evangelion. <laughs> in Latin. Um, so, anyway, anyway. This friend of mine was telling me about this Let's Go Brandon thing. And and he said how it was infuriating him. And I said, what the fuck are you talking about? Um, what's this Let's Go Brandon? I, the only brand I've, I've known Brandons in my life. Uh, they were they were pretty shitty people. But uh, why, why do we like Brandons now? And he goes, no, it's not about Brandon. It's about Joe Biden. And I'm going... What the fuck are you talking about, bro? And and he's and so then he explains it to me. So apparently a few weeks ago there was this thing where um, we have negative twenty five percent progress. There was this thing where um, at a football game people were chanting uh, "fuck Joe Biden," and um, so uh, and I guess somebody somebody was being interviewed or whatever on the sidelines or near the stadium and they said um what are they saying let's go brandon uh and so the joke became when you say let's go brandon you're actually saying fuck joe biden and it has apparently become a whole culture and he was showing me that like a woman had 
made a dress and put like it was like this evening gown and put let's go brandon on it uh and and he was and he was just so sick of it and he's going god just fucking say the words there's nothing wrong with say this is my buddy he's going there's nothing wrong was saying fuck Joe Biden. I say it four times an hour, but this let's go Brandon thing is awful. And he was just, yeah, he was just gonna, you know, blow a blood vessel on it. And I'm just cackling and just the, 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 the surrealism and weirdness of it all. Quicker summary, it's the booms. It's the boo earns skit from Simpsons, but in real life. Oh yeah, you're saying boo earns. Uh, I don't think we're gonna be able to convert um, the, the commies and the anarchists, uh... But yeah, that, 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 that sentence, uh... Was good, that, like, that's just one of those things that's gonna be burned into my memory forever, where it's just, there's nothing wrong with saying fuck Joe Biden, I say it four times an hour! But don't, but drop this let's go Brandon thing! <laughs> Okay, spring training, combat exercises are going on. Lieutenant blows a whistle, launches himself forward to the rest of the platoon. Machine gun spray death, a foot off the ground, and control bursts. Uh, sound on the far side of the enemy's position. Much of it deemed casualties. The wide thank you, your brain man. The Falcon clearly thinks we're going to be fighting war soon enough, and you better not get me fucking killed. We can show the commies and the anarchists the light of the free art market. I don't know, it's, it just all blurs together, right? <laughs> they just look the same to me. And then meanwhile, communists in my chat are just going... Yeah! Just typing it up. <laughs> are there communists in my chat? No, we don't have to talk about it. We don't have to talk about it. Uh... There are sitting members of the house that are wearing Let's Go Brandon merch. It's very annoying. Who's printing this stuff? Man, good for them. Get your money, man. That's like a... Oh, man. What protest was it, I think, last year? Or... It wasn't a protest. I just remember... I have this, this, this like, memory in my head of there being some event. And there were protesters and counter-protesters. And the news interviewed a dude who was selling, um, he was selling merchandise to both sides or something like that. <laughs> and he's like, I'm just here to get the money, man. It's very, it, it's very needful things when, um, the devil starts selling guns to both sides. Uh, okay. I don't know what it is we're supposed to do here. I guess I guess let's make a save file here because remember we gotta actually we're trying to actually get Shushkin in, in, in charge here. I'm probably not gonna stream much longer, by the way, guys. Shuxin, excuse me. reading the remnants of Joe, uh, the romance of Joe Nespo, Norwegian writer. I do listen on audiobooks to Frederick Nietzsche. I'd love to read uh, Victor Hugo or listen to an audiobook. Victor Hugo. I was, um, so, so, so Will Durant, who's one of my favorite authors, uh, he's the one who wrote the, uh, story of civilization. Hold on, I'm thinking here. Let's get the military governors. I think that's going to be helpful. Uh, Story of Civilization's book, he has this essay um, where he talks about the top 100 books for an education. And uh, it's not just a list, he has the list at the end of the essay. Uh, but he also kind of gives good advice in the essay for, for making your way through it. So, for example, most of the, you know, the books are in chronological order historically. So, you know, like, you're going to read the Iliad and the Odyssey before you're reading Roman stuff later. Uh, but uh, he talks about how, you know, some of the novels and things, like, you can just read those in any order you want. Like, it's it's a lot, it's just, it's entertainment. Like, you know, when you're trying to freaking slog through, I don't know, uh, yeah, like, like if you're just reading, like, a, a thick history of the Renaissance Italy and you're, like, you're kind of, it's, it's getting to be a bit much and you need a break, 
go read one of the novels. Um, you know, like, go read some Edgar Allan Poe. And, uh, but there's a, what he, he has Les Miserables by Victor Hugo on the list, but in the essay he says, you can kind of just skip through it. <laughs> Which I think is funny. Hello, oh, Accent Man. Uh, good evening, how's your Wednesday? Well, I'm saying before, uh, I had a, I had a long, kind of rough day at work, but, um, I, I got amused reading something earlier, so it put me in a good mood. Alright, so uh, I'm seeing that we have decisions here. Can we just... Operation Roskull? Oh, we could, yeah, we could just start the wars now. I guess we should then. Yeah, let's uh, eat these all up, save the political power. Okay. Oh, oh, whoa! We got some paragraphs coming down in the uh, in the chat now. Uh, Medio says communists are blinded by egalite absolute, and the anarchists are actually confused because they don't know how to make the difference between capitalists and fascists. Sophisticated said fascists are anti-capitalist. Fascism has nothing to do with capitalism. Fascists were actually socialists, and they hated capitalism. You cannot have capitalism in a totalitarian regime. Not possible. You lay Miz, just listen to the soundtrack. <laughs> I enjoy the, the Les Mis soundtrack, um, although having said that, the plots are different. The characterizations are, are certainly different as well. Um, all right, I think we're going to just try to eat uh, Orotia here, and then I'm going to end the stream. That'll be enough for one day. So, all preparations for the invasion of Oirutia are complete, ruled jointly by old believers and the Altai people. The unitary and religious nature of the state stands in contrast to our federation. Although an entirely unambitious government, unlike most others in the region, they nevertheless stand in the way of the unification of central Siberia, as such must be defeated completely by our forces and brought into the fold. Yeah, I got it. But I really like um, Les Miserables. It's actually uh, the unabridged Les Miserables is my current favorite um, 19th century literature. Um, though I have not read as much of, you know, fiction, uh, though, though I have not read as much 19th century, uh, fiction as I want. I actually had an idea about some interesting books to read. Those were some cuties, uh, in that picture. Uh, I had an idea for maybe, like, a little book club thing next year with these three specific books, uh, two of which are 19th century. And I'll talk about that later. Uh, but yeah, I could totally understand maybe where Will, Will, Will Durant was coming from because you know when you have the 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 the, the, the chapters uh, on uh, you know the sewage system and its history probably uh, don't appeal to most people. Oh, we can prepare a raid first. Uh, gonna take eleven days preparing the raid. No, 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 that would be funny, though, if we took that from the last minute. But I have two, I have two translation of Les Miserables. I have the Julie Ann, um, uh, translation, which is, like, extensively footnoted. Uh, but that's not the one that I originally read. I don't remember the name of the translator off the top of my head of who, who did the original one. But the, but the, the specific translation I always remember... Our specific line that's not in the Juliet and one is um, when when uh, when Victor Hugo is talking about the Battle of the Water of Waterloo, and then when Marshal Ney leads all the cavalry into attacking the infantry squares uh, of the of the British, and uh, and it's a it's a, it was like a hurricane meeting a volcano, and that line just always stuck with me. But it's not translated like that in, uh, in the other version I have. All right, come on. So I think we only got to take the capital. Oi, oi. What's going on here? Get in there now. Okay. Disband the salons. The salons of Tomps, which made up of undoubtedly great intellectuals, have long since outlived their usefulness. Get event change in management. What? 
What does this stuff do? What, what's the benefit? Next one, remove, get change in management. Huh. We can seize the Abakan arsenal. We could just get a get a mil extra military factory. You know, I will do that. That's a weird, stupid order. Beginning redistribution. Does that uh, that really seem like the best use of your time? Yeah, they're not taking Black Spring. What are they doing? We're not sure. Decide our future. We have to pass me the paint and glue. Perfect isn't easy, but it's me. There we go. The calls of tradition have been deafened by the drums. Okay, so I don't I don't know what the Siberian Black Army's doing, but we're gonna have a good warning ahead of time uh, if they're going to attack us, so I guess we'll go after People's Revolutionary Council first, but that's going to be it um, for now. And uh, in the next episode, we'll, you know, take on the Revolutionary Council and the Black Army. I think we could, we could beat them pretty easily. We've got some nice core. We're mobilizing more manpower as well and, you know, coring more stuff. Uh, yeah, I think, I think we'll be pretty easily able to do that, and then, you know, we'll probably do that early in the stream, and then we could there's always that kind of awkward zone where you're just waiting for, you know, 1969 so you can start unifying everything else. So we can wait for that. Um, anyway, I'm Conquering History Games. Thank you very much for joining me on tonight's stream. Uh, hit the like on your way out if you wouldn't mind. And uh, everyone have a very pleasant evening. Good night.